Now, if you pay attention to one square in particular, you can observe the evolution of how the model is attempting to learn how to create abstract art. This is the result of a generative adversarial network, or GAN for short. I used thousands of abstract images of pixel size, 256 by 256 by 3, to train the results from scratch. This process took me a little bit more than 50 hours of training on one Tesla P100 GPU. And GANs are actually not cheap whatsoever. It can take a GAN a few days, a few weeks, even a few months to fully, fully train its weights and reach up to a certain iteration where you can't really distinguish between a imposter image and a real image. Even running one particular GPU 24 seven for a week, even two weeks can add up to a few thousand dollars. So I'm gonna tell you how I did this for less than $50. You can get away with spending about $10 for Google Colab Pro as it is quite reasonable despite the limited use of its variable GPUs and sometimes spotty connection. But you can save yourself a headache by upgrading to the Google Colab Pro Plus for $50, which offers longer run times, a higher priority for faster GPUs and background execution. Now, if you're actually interested in creating something similar to what I had just created, well, let me show you how I did it. Alrighty, so the very first step that you need to do is to actually scrape your images. And for the images that you just saw earlier in this video, I used about 7,000 abstract images. Uh, it could be from a variety of sources, but in the end result, you want to make sure they're in a JPEG or PNG format. And if they're not in a JPEG format, like for instance, over here, which I'm training a new image, but notice that all my images here are JPEGs. I wrote a, a function that can convert all of those JPEGs to a PNG file over here. All you need to do is just replace those directories, the wherever your files are located and where you want to send your PNG files. And so in this case, I sent them to data cleaned trained. So if you go to data cleaned train, these are the results of what those JPEGs, essentially just convert them to a PNG file. Uh, that's what happens to all of those. Uh, and also let's take, check out the properties, look at details. So notice that the dimensions here are 299 by 299. So some additional cleaning is needed for the neural network that we will be using, the StyleGAN 2-ADA. Uh, the dimensions have to be a power of two. So in this particular case, I wrote an additional function that makes sure is that whichever file, whichever picture that we are working with, regardless if it's already a square or if it's going to be a rectangle, uh, it will actually go ahead and it could convert it to a square and expand or contract based on whatever dimensions that you want to pass it through. So you can play around with that. In this case, I just passed in 1024 for a new uh, particular project that I'm working on. However, for the abstract images that you saw earlier, I used five no, I use 256 over here. So yeah, you can play around with that. And the resulting the resulting images there, uh, I sent it to, yeah, trained resize. So let's go here, check, take a look at that. So in this case, it should be 1024. Yeah, 1024 by 1024. It adjusts the dimensions that we are working with and it makes sure that it's a power of two so that it is now compatible with uh, a style GAN. And last but not least, let's actually go ahead and run this piece. This checks to see if all of our uh, channels are actually a like a property of three. We want to make sure that all of the channels are three. So the dimensions that we'll be working with here, let's open up this again, will be 1024 by 1024 by three, where that three is basically like a dimension to incorporate color. I think it's RGB, red, green, blue. Um, just based on how the photos are actually structured in the back end. Uh, so we can actually go ahead and run this. Let's go ahead and save this and then let's run that to see if there are any images that are that don't actually have ooh, let's kind of activate art GANs. Those clean data. So notice that we have an empty array, meaning that none of the images that are currently in our clean trained resize, none of the images are out of place. And once we're comfortable with the, you know, with all of our pre-processing, it's all ready to go. All the dimensions are consistent and all the channels are consistent as well. Let's go ahead and actually upload all of our images to the Google Drive. And this is basically where my images are actually stored. There are 20 or 20,000 or so images here, and it took about four 
four hours to do that. So it's quite some time. Uh, but yeah, uh, once you have your images inside of your Google Drive, let's go ahead and check out how Google Colab can interact with this. So the link for this particular notebook is also down in the description below. So first things first, once you actually open this notebook, go ahead and click on this RAM disk icon here. Click on your manage sessions. Make sure that your GPU enabled. This is it should be the very top line of where you're looking at. I'm running something else, a different model altogether on my other notebook, but you can actually run two sessions here. And so if you're not in GPU, go ahead and click on change runtime type and click on GPU and voila, you have a GPU. Uh, and then go ahead and you know run through these steps. Uh, also note that I got most of this code from this particular link. You can go ahead and check them out over there. Um, there were a few instances where you know you had to do some things behind the scenes, and this is what I'm doing right now in order to make sure that everything's actually running correctly. Go ahead and click Run or Restart Runtime in order to you know just traverse through. This is how I got through his issues. Um, now that the packages have been, you know, installed, I suppose. So this is just uh, getting down the TensorFlow version. It has to be 1.x because that is what StyleGAN2 is compatible with. Uh, go ahead and, you know, run this particular cell to see what type of TensorFlow you're working with. In this case, it's 1.15.2, which is totally fine. Let's also check out what type of GPU we're using. In this case, we got a P100, which is fine. Uh, it's one of the better ones out there. And Let's go ahead and mount Google Drive where I uploaded all those files, all those images too. And once we connected there, let's go ahead and just run through these other parts where I'm essentially going to be uh, pulling in a repository for StyleGAN2, uh, noticed over here. And it will clone it and put it on my actual Google Colab notebook, which is awesome. So I already actually have all of my stuff located inside of right here, Google colab sg2 ada uh, and all of my images are located in i believe those artists right here i don't want to open it up because there's so many images where it'll just break everything um, but this is the part where i already ran through so um, you don't need to do this part right here but once your images are already inside of the google colab notebook you want to make sure you correct the path to wherever your images are located. So my image folder is called artist, which is located here. You just right click here and copy path. And then you can just go ahead and paste it over here. Uh, this is the new data set name. Uh, I just incorporated a TensorFlow record um, at the very end, dash TF. And this is the location where it'll, the TensorFlow records will be put into right here, data sets. Uh, once you actually run it, uh, I already ran it as you see it right here. And this is what it will look like. You got, I mean, I had a very large file, so I had 10 TF records. You might have smaller once you actually run it, uh, but that's what it'll look like. I just moved all of my files from this data sets folder on over here, uh, just in case there's an, there's an update with the actual GitHub repository up above. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all you really need to do once you have your TensorFlow records over here. Uh, you can now use these um, records as an input to your training of your model. And so in this case, I'm already resuming from uh, from another notebook from a, a different pickle file. But if you don't have anything to resume from, you can just go ahead and delete this portion, empty that one out and make sure you comment out this portion. You can also look at the other parameters we have going on over here to see what uh, was happening in the back end. Other than that, all you gotta do is just wait for a very, very long time. Um, so I'm already running this on a different notebook, but this is on a 1024 by 1024 image. And as you can see on a P100, this is taking like 35 minutes per iteration. And I'm saving every five snapshots over here. So every fifth iteration here, I go ahead and save the weights and I save its associated JPEG. So for this particular case, this is around the, I think a, a few iterations in for my particular model that I'm currently training. Uh, this is the it's ongoing process and we can see that the models are becoming more detailed uh, the more iterations I'm putting this through. And if we just go back a, a few more, like we can see that digression on just the amount of detail that is like, you know, available out there. So. Um, it's really cool. So once we actually have all of the images, like, you know, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, so on and so forth, we can go back to the main script over here. And these are all my abstract images uh, that you saw earlier for this video. 
uh, if we can just pull up any old one this is what that looks like it's just like a little snapshot but yeah you can create a gif out of this so i got all my jpegs in one particular folder and then you just run this particular function and it will write it to a gif uh, where that gif is right here